Today I'm excited to show you an Evans Rotorque 1040 T-molding applicator machine. This is a machine that's been in my personal shop for a number of years. I heavily modified it so that it would keep up with production needs. If you don't know what T-molding does, there's a good example right here. This is a bench top uh, that we used to manufacture uh, for a uh, girls table and bench set and this is the T-molding. It provides you a really nice professional finished edge to your product. It's very durable. It comes in all sorts of sizes and colors and it also doesn't ding up walls or make marks on walls. You see it in a lot of commercial applications for uh, doctor's offices, commercial settings, schools, daycares, things like that. Uh, you can see that it works really well on radius corners, but I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, you can actually use it on 90 degree corners as well. That's something that a lot of people don't know. Uh, but you can actually use T-molding on a hard corner like that if it's modified the way this one is. The way that it works is this. You have your T-molding. As this comes out right here, this is your hammer. As you apply pressure to it, it starts to hammer it back. It hammers it into the kerf that I'm going to show you that we're going to cut into this piece right here. Okay, these other two units, this is the flush cut and this is the, uh, the kerf cut. The flush cut cuts it off straight. The kerf cut, I'll show you right here, you punch this uh, foot pedal. What it does is it creates that kerf right there. What that kerf allows you to do is to make that hard corner. By pushing it in, you eliminate the rib and you can uh, uh, tighten it down. The other uh, uh, unit right there, the flush cut, just cuts it off nice and square. Okay? Uh, this is something you won't see on any other T-molding machine out there. This feeder is a mechanism that I built for this. Uh, believe it or not, there are no feeders for T-molding machines. This is the way T-molding comes in a box just all loose like this so you can imagine if you didn't have a feeder that that turned uh, this would quickly turn into a huge mess this whole unit breaks down you can see right here this is hinged so this whole plate right here this whole unit will flop down to the side this uh, support leg is also just held in by these wing screws. It can be stood up and locked in. And then the entire top of this can be simply just lifted off. And so for storage uses and for having extra room, uh, works out great. The back side of this, this is the curve cutter. This is also something that you will see very rarely, very rarely on T-molding machines. Most of them require a separate shaper or router setup for you to cut the curve, which makes it very inconvenient. Um, this has a really nice two horsepower quarter cable, 110 volt router. You can see the curve right here. These units here are simply spring-loaded units to help keep the piece nice and flat. And you've got your ball bearings here to let it roll through. That makes sure that as your piece passes through, it gets cut consistently at the right height. I'm going to turn it on. So as you can hear, there's no whining, there's no hesitation, no problems. We also have a vacuum unit set up on this so that it can collect the dust. You'll get this uh, first section of pipe right here uh, with the unit. And then here's your air connection. Like I said, this is a 110 volt unit with 90 PSI of air, and that's all that it requires. So in just a second, I'm gonna put this on pause and get set up to show you how to kerf a piece and then how to apply the edge banding. So like I showed you before, this is just a piece of three quarter inch thermal fuse laminate. We're gonna cut the kerf first and then we'll go to the other side and show you how to apply the T-bolding.
start by simply inserting the T-molding into your curve right here. And then you begin to hammer it in. When the corner reaches this line right here, I'm going to kerf it. Last thing right here, we're going to set this up so we flush cut it. A lot of times what you'll do is you'll pull this out then, but I know exactly where to put it so that it lines up really nicely. So this is your finished product. If you'd like more information on this machine, contact me, Steve, at scscustomwoodworks.com. As far as price goes, the cheapest team molding machine I've seen on eBay was for $3,000. That's for the model previous to this one, the 1030. It did not have a kerf cutter, it did not have a vacuum port, it did not have the material feeder. So for those reasons alone, I think I could command $5,000. Uh, I'll sell this for $4,500. Shoot me an email and we'll talk. Thanks a lot.